Good afternoon, and welcome to evening service at Sussex United Methodist Church. My name is Pastor Nancy Cook, and I am from Harmony Hill United Methodist Church in Stillwater, visiting with you this evening, covering for Pastor Tim. I, too, start my evening, my services with a meditation, so if you would take a look at your bulletin, our meditation for this evening comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. We will sing, say this verse three times as we meditate upon these words. Take a moment now to read it. What does it mean to you to think of God as the first and the last? What does it mean to hear God say, Besides me, there is no God. Hear these words again. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Please stand if you are able and join us in the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Stars spin across the sky and the dawn slides into day. God the Creator calls us to new awareness. The ocean pulses with life, and even starfish seem to dance. Babies crawl, friends call, and the older teaches the younger how to wink. God the Maker calls us to thankfulness. God the Friend calls us to share a smile and tend the wounds. A sudden stillness, a quiet moment, a deep prayer, a persistent yearning. God, the, the end, end of our longings, calls us to worship with hearts filled with deep quiet and contagious joy. Amen. Please remain standing and join us in our first hymn tonight. It is for the beauty of the earth. It can be found in your hymnal on pages 92, and we're going to sing verses 1, 5, and 6. Thank you.
maybe seated. The scripture reading tonight comes to us from the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verses 4b through 8. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on, on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. Please stand if you are able and join us in the glory be to the Father. It can be found on page 70 in the United Methodist Hymnal. from St. John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 20. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. A word from God for the people of God, and we say, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. There's a little chorus in our hymn book called, He is Lord. The lyrics go like this. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I very deliberately open my words to you this evening with this chorus to remind us what separates the Christian faith from all other religions. And it is that the resurrected Jesus is Lord, Savior, and King. We worship a living God who was and is and is to come. We worship a God of community as one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As Christians, we declare Jesus Lord, crucified, risen, and coming again in our liturgy. When we accept God's gift of salvation through Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, we declare him Lord of our lives. This Sunday, tomorrow, is Christ the King Sunday, a day to celebrate Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And if those words make you hear have a Messiah ringing in your ears, we know that the very next line is going to be, and he shall reign forever and ever. 
The Bible opens with these words, Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This tells of the creation of the tangible world that we know, the earth and the sky. Not the creation of God, for God was already. God was in existence always. I know, that's a hard one. No beginning to God is more than our human minds can comprehend. But still, it's cool to ponder it, isn't it? Now, the very last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the dwelling place of God is with people. This is the holy city of God. When we will all be with God, God will reign and we will see Jesus on the throne and all will be right. When I hear the words, the dwelling place of God is with people, I like to envision walking the streets of heaven with Jesus, conversing with him like the disciples did. Of course, the Bible tells us there'll be no more tears, no more crying, no more death. The heavenly place that we can only dream of. The place where we will join all the saints for eternity. You see, if we can't envision heaven, even if each of our minds envisions it differently, how then can we anticipate with joy eternity with Jesus as king? The psalmist said, the earth is the Lord's and everything that is in it. All these verses I've mentioned so far come to life when we trust in God's word and have faith to believe in God. And then we come to today's text from the book of Revelation and we read the words, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And we can take comfort in God who was before us walks with us daily through, through the Holy Spirit, and will welcome us into eternity to join the dwelling place of God with our Savior Jesus, who lives and reigns forever. God is there in our beginning. God is with us as we live and breathe. And God will be there at the ending of this mortal life to welcome us home. Beginning and end. Let's talk about that for a minute. We begin life on this planet with God. We are born into a family, a community, hopefully a church congregation that welcomes us and loves us. We grow all throughout our life's journey, seeking wisdom and truth, all the while facing the joys and sorrows of life. We move fast in our youth, all the and then a bit slower as we age. Isn't it interesting, however, that in our mind, we think we can still do the things of our youth, right? In our mind, we are no different now than we were before. And that speaks volumes to us about the spiritual us, the part of us that makes the spiritual journey towards God. Yes, God is with us. In prevenient grace, God goes before us, paving the way in love. In justifying grace, God welcomes us when we say yes to God in our conversion moment, the moment when we say yes, Jesus died for us. And then God walks with us each and every day through sanctifying grace as we live a holy life in relationship and covenant with God as his beloved children. This is the God that we love, accept, and serve, the Alpha and Omega. Alpha means beginning, Omega means ending. The Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Almighty God going before us, beside us, above us and below us, every step along the way. Do you believe this? Do you seek and feel God's presence in your life? Do you see God in nature around you and in the seasons of the earth as they live and grow and change? All 
part of God's creation? Do you see God in the creatures around you? Do you see God in the faces of our brothers and sisters, family and friends? For are we not all created in God's image? In John 10, 10, Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. Our lives are important and we have purpose. Jesus declares for us that the gift of life that we have been given is to be enjoyed in all the fullness that life offers us. Are we doing that? Are we embracing all that God's creation offers us? Are we gleaning from it the beauty, the love, and the grace that is offered to us each and every day? This coming week, we'll be given the opportunity to celebrate Thanksgiving. Of course, as Christians, we know we are to live in an attitude of thanksgiving and praise every day of our lives. And when we consider our blessings at Thanksgiving, we might all have different things to say, but collectively, we thank God for the gift of life. We thank God for Jesus. We remember every knee shall bow and every tongue confess Jesus as Lord and King. We do it now every day of our lives, and we will do it every day in eternity. If the pandemic has taught us nothing else, we should realize life as the precious gift that it is. Life with its fragile beginning and unknown end. If we fail to live in love, all other gifts and blessings are useless. All other things in life hold no purpose. One time, I heard a sermon many years ago by Reverend David Jeremiah. And in it, he asked a question. What can you take with you to heaven? Well, nothing of this earth. Only the souls of others that will be found here and there. It was his way of teaching us that we are to witness to the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ as we invite others into relationship to experience God. Our seeds of witness may not be seen by us, but when another seeks and finds God, we are told that even the angels of heaven rejoice. And when we consider the magnitude and the grandeur of God as Alpha and Omega, and then consider that this is the God who invites us to live life, not in shame or guilt or bitterness, but in forgiveness and grace with all of its abundance. How can we in our limited minds comprehend such a thing? Well, it humbles us, doesn't it? This is the free gift of grace that we receive. This is the salvation offered to us as God's beloved children. We will know life to the fullest when we abide with God, the God of community, Father, Son, and Spirit. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 28, it says these words, For in him we live and move, and have our being. The greatest freedom we enjoy is not freedom of speech, freedom of the press, or even freedom of worship, but our ultimate greatest freedom is freedom over death through the gift of eternal life with Jesus. Our lives are in God's hands every moment of every day. The Apostle Paul in Romans 14, 8 said, If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. That's someone who understood the magnitude and grandeur of the living God. John Wesley on his deathbed put it this way, Best of all, God is with us each in their own way, expressing the unknown of forever, yet not expressing fear. In our Revelation text, the veil between life and death was pulled back, and the vision John saw is shared with us. In verse 7, we read, Look, he is coming with the clouds.
clouds and everyone will see him. Are you a cloud watcher? When you see a huge, majestic white cloud, can you envision it as one that Jesus could return on? I've been a cloud watcher my entire life. Libby and I share this love, and often we say to each other, there's a Jesus cloud. How about when the sun's rays burst forth through the cloud and you see the light streaming down from above? Then do you think of the second coming of Jesus? It may be in our lifetime. It may not. Only God knows. But we are called to watch and wait. In the meantime, we are called to actively welcome others into the kingdom of God on earth by sharing the gospel message of Jesus, seeking peace and justice, offering love and grace, and remaining in the body of Christ in the world, the kingdom of God on earth. It comforts me to know that I serve a God with no beginning and no end. It comforts me to hold fast to the fact that not only is God a God of love, but God has always been love, is love, and will always be love. God will not and cannot stop loving because God's nature is love. I pray you are comforted and can hold fast to the God who loves you, created you, given you life, leading you and guiding you in grace, died to save you, rose again to provide you a place to be with him. Today, when we declare with our mouths, Jesus is King of kings and Lord of lords, we align ourselves with the kingdom of God on earth. Trusting and believing his kingdom will have no end. This is the assurance we need to persevere through all the trials and struggles that we face through life's journey. This is what we need to stand on a firm foundation of faith. All our days are lived in the presence of God. All our holidays will be celebrated in the presence of God. All we are, all we can be, all we can do is defined by who we are in Jesus Christ. Do you know him? This Jesus who calls us to abide with him? This Jesus that we declare Christ the King? Has the presence of Jesus changed your life? We worship God, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, who invites us personally to the transformation that is possible through the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Uh, we come to a time in our service where we want to lift up any joys and concerns that we need to share. Does anyone have anything to share tonight? I would like to celebrate your being with us tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is a, a, a real joy for me to come back to my home church. I feel the same way. I echo that. That it's nice to be here. <laughs> it is nice. Any concerns to lift up? All right, let's come I before. I have a, a concern. <laughs> yeah. um, my brother-in-law, Rod Smith, um, has been uh, tested positive for COVID and came with immune compromise, so it's just so scary. But so far, he's been you know, okay. He was vaccinated, so okay. we're hoping. And his first name is Rod? Rod. R -O -D. Rod. R -O -D.
Let's come to before God in prayer. Most holy God, creator of heaven and earth, Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, we come before you to worship and praise you with our lives. We remember Jesus, mighty indeed, healing the sick and the hurting, using for others the power he would not invoke for himself. Jesus, who welcomes us in forgiveness, love, and grace, who as master and lord to his disciples, was also among them and loved them as their companion and friend, providing the example of how we must love and serve one another, following the ways of Christ. Jesus, whose deepest desire was to do your will, most holy God and Father of us all, providing the world with the forgiveness of sins and reconciling all who believe to enter the kingdom. We see you, O God, in the life of Jesus, who loved people, yet left them to seek out times to be in prayer with you, rising before daylight, seeking the solitude and abiding love that you offer. May we too seek the same love in the quiet moments of our lives. Lord, we've lifted up the names of these tonight that are in need of your love, in need of your healing, in need of your presence to be so aware that they feel your love as they struggle with health issues and difficulties. Lord, even on this day as we declare Christ the King, help us to remember how Jesus is to be exalted above all else in our lives, in our community, and in our world. Help us to remember that as his followers, we are to be his hands and feet, reaching out to do whatever we can to help those in need. In our adoration, receive our praises, our prayers, and the Christian actions of our hands and feet to point all to the saving grace of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and King. Hear us now, Lord, as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is now time in our service where we offer our tithes and offerings to our Lord. if you are able and join us in our last hymn tonight God will take care of you it's in the United Methodist hymnal on page 130 and we're singing tonight verses 1, 3 and 4 thank you
tonight, let us keep in mind that Thanksgiving is more than a meal. It's more than a time to be with family and friends. It's a time to count our blessings and thank God for all he has given us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us go in peace to love and serve the God. Amen. Amen. Amen.